Well, well, good, good, good afternoon. Good evening, my friends. Welcome to Life in the Word. It is our weekly Bible study, and indeed, it is a joy to be coming to you at this time, to be sharing what God has laid on my heart with you this afternoon. Now, friends, I just want to say thanks for taking the time to be joining us week after week and for sharing in whatever way you can in our weekly Bible studies. Now, I know there are some of us who may want to ask some questions or make comments. Please feel free to do so. You can use your YouTube or if you are watching via Facebook, you can use those streams. That's fine. But you can also send direct to us using the number listed 754-242-2592. And again, I just want to say thanks. Let me just apologize for our broadcast. Last week, we had some challenges and we really felt very bad that we were unable to provide the quality of service that we really hope to be offering. So let me apologize. The technical difficulties we endured last week was extreme and we were unable to provide the quality that we intend to be offering in the service that we have here. Now, I, I was challenged by a few persons that I must do over the study last week. I wouldn't say I'm going to do the entire study over, but there are aspects of the study that I would uh, seek to tap into as I continue the study with us this, this evening. Now, last week we spent some time and we journeyed together looking on the battlefield of the mind, battlefield of the mind, and that's what we are going to that theme we are going to continue as we study the word together tonight. Could we just bow our heads as we ask God's leading and his guidance in this time of study? Let us pray. Gracious God, to you be the glory forever. We pause at this time thankful for your leading, thankful for the power of your Holy Spirit, thankful that you will bring fresh revelation to us, fresh insight, and you will deepen our knowledge in the word. God, we pray that self in us will be slain because oftentimes we are drawn to excitement, things that feeds that feed the flesh and not necessarily that which edifies. So God, right now we submit to the leading of your spirit. Teach us now, we pray. As your disciples said, Lord, teach us how to pray. But it's not just to pray, to know your word tonight. And this we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, yes, my friends, as I indicated earlier, that we are going to do, we are going to try to see how we can dovetail the study that we begun last week as we reflect on the whole thing, battlefield of the mind. Now, the, the truth is that we, 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 are, we are struggling. We are struggling. Many of us, mentally, we are in a warfare. And we do not want to admit it for some of us. But many of us cannot do nothing else but just admit that the battle is on. Amen? So it is, how do we use the scripture uh, to address that aspect of the struggle that we endure? And many of these struggles are not necessarily the literal physical thing around us, but it is a warfare taking place in the mind. And the mind sometimes enables us or sometimes it, it, it causes us to lose our grounding. Now, I'm going to use as the base text tonight as we study Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And it reads thus, and many of us would know it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, 
acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, this text is, is actually speaking to us in a very, very profound way because it is Paul addressing the church of Rome. And it is interesting that Paul, in speaking to them, you know, is saying to them, my friends, my brothers, by the mercies of God, I am now addressing you. And the challenge that I want to give you is that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And then he, he drew them into a place to say to them, do not be conformed. Do not allow the world to shape the, the, the behavior patterns that you develop. Do not allow the things of the world to de define who you are. Do not allow the things of the world to dictate your performance, your function, and your effectivity in terms of who you are as a person. Do not allow the world to shape who you will become, who you are now and who you will become. But he, he challenges them to a place where he says, but this is what I want you to know. Be transformed. In other world, words, be changed by the renewing of your mind. The mind is a very powerful, powerful device. And sadly, there are many of us who have not been who God wants us to be. We are not functioning the way God wants us to function. And we are losing aspects of ourselves because our mind is not where it ought to be. Our mind is sadly, is letting us down. Now, as I started last week, I, 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 I wanted to just remind us what a battlefield is. Now, the battlefield really is, you know, and the, what the mind is. The battlefield is really the field or the ground on which a battle is fought. It is an era of contention, conflict, or hostile uh, opposition. And the truth is that there are many of us who are going through this warfare situation where the enemy is raging war in the mind. And, 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 and this battle is very intense. It is very serious. And we are wondering, how will we get out? So the contention, the conflict, the hostile, the hostility that we are faced with is taking place mentally. And oftentimes we create enemies in people when it is all taking place here in the mind. So when the mind tells us that someone who means us well is an enemy, it means that we are at a place where we ended up losing many persons who should be friends by declaring them enemies. Many persons who were in our corners, who were encouragers of our beings, we have developed negative relationships because of what, or what is taking place in our mind. The mind is a very funny place, my brothers and sisters. And the mind really is the mental function of an individual. And it is what shapes his or her thinking, whether consciously or unconsciously, and is manifested in the feelings or the moods, perceptions, assumptions, wills, or desires. In essence, the mind is what shapes. It shapes our behaviors. It shapes our moods. It, 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 it shapes our perceptions of people and, and, and of things around us. It, 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 it draws, up, draws us into making certain assumptions um, or certain wills or desires, what we crave. That's what the mind is able to do. Now, if the mind is this, sadly, many of us have allowed the mind to be dictating how we function. And God wants us to reclaim, take authority over the mind. In this warfare, 
when it, it, as the enemy tries to come up against us. We have to know who we are and, and the, to the God whom we belong. And if we are going to reclaim who we are in Christ, we have to reclaim the mind. The mind needs to become sober yeah, and, 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 and what it ought to be. And this is very, very important. Now, Paul, you know, teaches this. And, and it is very important that we be mindful that Paul teaches this. Now, in, in writing to Timothy, in 2 Timothy 1 and, chapter, and, 1 and verse 7, Paul says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. In essence, with all that is happening around us, God does not want us to allow the world to overtake us. That fear grips us and we, we stop functioning. But what he has done is that he has given us the authority, the power. He has given us everything to, to function in love with that soberity, that, that soberness that is necessary. If there is no, nothing sober about who we are, then the enemy will win. If we are, if we are not functioning the way we should function, the enemy is going to defeat us. So we have to reclaim the mind. The mind ought to be what it must be. And this is very, very important. So if this is the case, my brothers and sisters, the question is, and this is very, very, you know, important. What is, is, is it that the enemy is trying? Because in Isaiah 26 and verse 3, the, the, the word of God tells us that he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because you trust in you. Because he trusts in you. The, the, the reality, my friends, is that the enemy wants to take away our peace of mind. There are many of us who are so troubled that we cannot function. But the word of God is telling us that he will keep us in perfect peace if our mind is fixed on him and if we trust in him. God wants us to develop the confidence to know that we can rely on him. We can depend on him. We can trust him in whatever season we are passing through. And there are many of us who are passing through some turmoils in our lives right now. Troubles in our marriages, in our businesses. And, 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 and we are going through very great, in, and I mean serious difficulties. And we are wondering what to do in, 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 the, in this season what we are passing through. I say to you, my friend, that we need to return to the place where God wants us to be. That place of confidence in our God, knowing that he will keep us in perfect peace if our hearts and our mind is stayed on him. Now, we have to understand all of this is pointing to what the devil is about, my friends. Because what he's doing, it, 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 we have to understand, is that he wants to take the mind and claim the mind and control the mind. Because as long as he's in control of the mind, then everything else will reflect him. If the, if the enemy controls the mind, then he controls everything else. And that's why the mind must be safeguarded. We have to guard our minds based on the persons we share conversations with, based on the activities we participate in, based on everything that we do. Because the mind, my friends, is very important. Because the battle field in what is taking place in the mind, it, it brings about ill health in terms of mental illness in many. It is, it is created and fashioned by television, you know, the movies and the news. You know, it is shaped by the, the entertainment we are involved in, you know, whether music, sports, or... Uh, and, and all of these are very important things in life. Television is important. And, 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 and sports and, 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 and the music and, and entertainment. All of this is important. Don't get me wrong. But we have to make sure we, we guard ourselves in a careful way. That we do not allow these things to, to become the things that will shape who we become. We must become a people who will who are so in Christ that nothing else matters. 
and, and everything about our lives should reflect the glory of our God. And that's what is very important. So, so even, you know, issues like family life and all of those things, these things help to shape who we become eventually. So that's, this is what the, the text is, is addressing. But if you look carefully, my friends, the text is addressing much more. You know, in, in terms of Isaiah, it is addressing much more. In examining the text, you will notice the word stayed, which is from the Hebrew Samak. And, 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 and the meaning of this word is to lean up against. It is, it is to draw support are being, be, be, are being uphold by. In essence, my friends, when we, we, we talk about, uh, you know, when, when the text is talking about steered, so it is addressing, he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is steered. That means we, 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 we are leaning up against our God in, in our focus, in our attention, and it becomes a literal thing that we are leaning upon him. And in leaning upon him, we are drawing spiritual resource. We are drawing physical resource. We are drawing everything from him. And he will uphold us in whatever season we are passing through. The God we serve, my friends, is, is willing to, to keep us if we are willing to lean on him. He's willing to support us if we are willing to lean upon him. He's willing to uphold us if we are willing to lean on him. So whatever season you're passing through, God wants us to lean on him in this time, in this time of struggle, in this time of difficulty. Uh, yes, as COVID is attacking our lives, attacking our businesses, um, as you are going through a very depressive time because of the hardship you're faced with, I want to tell you, my friends, just turn your focus to God. Turn your eyes unto him. As the psalmist declares, I will lift my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And I want us to know that God is the one on whom we can lean in difficult times. We can lean on him in tough times. And we can draw from the reservoir of, 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 of his support and of his grace and of his love and of his mercy because of who God is. So my friends, yes, we must understand this. So what, what is it? You know, and, and I want to make sure as I quickly push on here, as I addressed last week. If you look at the, all of this, there, there are some things that I started addressing was unable to complete because of what happened last week. Now, the first thing in terms of this, looking at the text, what, it, it, as we think about battlefield of the mind, I want to say, my friends, is this, that when we are, when this battle becomes more in, intense, it is when we are enduring difficulties and trials. Imagine those days in your life. Imagine when things really get tough on you. And as you are going through your difficult moments, sometimes we lose our sense of focus. We lose who we are. We cannot think the way we should think. Our behaviors change. Because nobody, nobody whatsoever likes difficulty. I don't know of anybody who enjoys a difficult situation. Difficulties, you know, are things that we all try to avoid. But difficulties, my friends, offers us a chance. You know, it, it, it gives us a choice to believe God or Satan. Who are we going to believe? Whose report are we going to embrace in this season of difficulty? Are we going to believe the report of Satan that says we are we, we are defeated? Or are we going to believe the report of our Lord Jesus Christ who gives us victory? Are we going to believe the report of the enemy who tells us that we are sick and we will die with the sickness? Or are we are going to believe the report of our God, Jehovah, Rafa, the God who heals and he heals us of all our diseases? Are we going to trust him in this time of difficulty? Are we going to really trust God? Ah, uh, yes, when we are weak and the enemy says, look how weak you are. 
And yet the God says, it is in that weakness then we are made strong in him. Whose report are we going to believe, my friend? And, and, and this is very important because in this warfare that I'm talking about, about difficulties and trials, we have to be careful who we are entertaining to be friends. We have to be careful because it, 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 we can entertain some persons who come and speak into our lives some negative stuff that cause us to lose a sense of who we are. And God does not want us to lose a sense of who we are, but to trust him in this time. To trust him and, and, and not to be surprised by what is happening. To trust him. Yes, the enemy will come up against us like a flood. But we are going to trust our God to lift a standard against the enemy. That's what, that's what you know, Peter, he, he, he addresses us. And he addresses us in a very, very clear way. In 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 First Peter chapter four verses twelve and thirteen, it tell it tells us that we shouldn't be surprised by the fiery trials which will come our way. We shouldn't be surprised by the testings we are enduring. Peter reminds us about this, my friends. What he says is that whatever when these things come, don't be surprised. It is a part of the spiritual course. Because the, 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 the higher you're going, God, the greater the challenges you'll experience from the enemy. The enemy does not like to see the people of God progress. He does not like to see you advance. So he will do everything for you to endure setbacks. But in all of this, my friends, I say to you, rejoice as you experience as Christ experienced. Rejoice that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed because a day of rejoicing is coming when the devil will be defeated in every single way. When all the challenges we are going through will, will not be anymore. So that's why in, 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 in the Gospel of John chapter 16, it reads thus, I have said these things to you that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, you'll have trials. So don't be surprised because of all the issues happening, because of the difficulties you're enduring, because of the, the testings you're going through. Do not be surprised. It will happen. But when it is happening, the Lord Jesus himself said, take heart. In other words, have courage. Because the Lord who we serve has overtaken the world. My friends, I want us to understand God wants us to get to a place where we do not allow certain difficulties in life to cause us to lose who we are. But we will trust him in our, in our difficult seasons. Because, let me tell you, somebody once said that tough times, does not, tough times do not last, but tough people do. In other words, if we are willing to endure, we will overcome. And I want to say to somebody, overcome your trials. Don't give up yet. Don't give up any at all because your victory is on the road. It's, 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 it's just a little more journey. It's just a, another day of waiting. It is around the corner. If you are willing to hold on and to press on and to believe God for your victory. Don't give up. Do not quit because you did not get the promotion. Your promotion a greater one is coming. It's just for you to hold on because God is going to open a door in your life that you never imagined. God is going to use, maybe you're saying people are fighting against you. I've heard that many times. Oh, people are fighting against me. I say to you, my friend, even though there are many persons who may be fighting against you, hold fast and trust God. Because what? God will use even your enemies to open doors for you. Oh, glory be to God. I said, God will use even your enemies. So let, let me press on because I'm getting excited as I, as I teach here tonight. And, and, and sometimes I can get a little carried away. And I don't want to get carried away tonight. So difficulties and trials. And also, I, I, I took some time and I also addressed disobedience. Now, this 
is, is very, very important. Because disobedience or sin is a prime battlefield of the mind. And we must understand why I say prime battlefield of the mind. Because there are many of us, my friends, there are many of us who don't understand this. Now, Psalm 81 and verses 11 and 12 speak to us. It says, but my people did not listen to my voice. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own counsel. Now, this is the psalm is speaking, and he's speaking about the people who were so stubborn. And disobedience, my friends, I want us to understand disobedience because it is something that we need to understand. Disobedience, my friends, is, 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 is a means of waywardness. It is a rebellious way of behaving. My friends, disobedience is, is defiance. It is to be non-compliant. In other words, there are so many of us who are wayward, who are, who are, who are never listening to what God is saying. We are always doing everything in opposition to God. We, we disobey God. And, and in the same breath, there are many of us who are disobedient where we are. And it is because it takes place. Because we tell ourselves, oh, I'm not doing it. Because we, we believe that we are bigger than obeying those who are set above us. We, we disrespect and we disregard and we disobey from parents to our employers to um, the laws of the land. We, we, we are constantly rebelling, rebelling, rebelling and believe that we are radicals as we call it. No, you're not a radical. What it is, is that you're wayward. And you, in the name of Jesus, what needs to take place in your life is, is that you need to be drawn to a place of repentance. You're not, it's not being radical as we call it. Oh, me a radical, that's what I mean, you know, do. No, it's not, you're not being radical, my friend. What is happening is that you are being rebellious. What is happening is that you are demonstrating a spirit of defiance and, and, and God is going to hold you accountable. A day is coming when we will all have to give an account for our disobedience. The word of God tells us that obedience is better than sacrifice. And too often many of us disobey our God and believe that it is all right. But God is drawing us to a place to be obedient to him. We need to be obedient to the leadership in our lives. In the church, there needs to be obedience. In our, in our homes, there needs to be obedience. And wherever we are, there needs to be obedience because what? Two cannot walk unless they agree, my friend. And that is where many of us are hurting. Friends, let me say this. The church is hurting today because many of us are unwilling, unwilling to get to the place where we submit to authority. Many of us do not like authority. We are always countering authority. We do not like somebody giving us instruction to do what is right. And because we are constantly in conflict against authority, then we have the, 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 the chaos around us and, and, and we become chaotic in our lifestyles. That's why the, 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 the society today is so chaotic because everybody is rebelling. Rebe we, re we rebel against those who rebel and we rebel against those who are set against us. So there is a spirit of confusion manifesting itself. But I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And I, and I speak into somebody's life right now. The, 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 the spirit of obedience. I speak over families in the name of Jesus. The spirit of I speak over individuals who are watching tonight. In the name of Jesus, I command you to a place to respect those who are above you. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Oh, glory be to God. So we must understand 
that God wants us to get away from being wayward in our, our ways to get to a place. It is a battle taking place here that we cannot humble ourselves to the place to say, look, I will respect authority. I will honor those who are set above me. God wants us to be mindful of that, my friends. God wants us to be mindful that if we are not in charge, somebody's in charge. If we are not the ones who are in charge, then we must respect those who are in charge. Oh, God, I thank you. So, so this is what the, 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 the passage was addressing, my friends, in terms of Isaiah 81, 11 and 12. But my people did not listen. Those of us who we declare that we are Christians, but we are not listening to the voice of the living God. Israel, the church of Christ, believers, those of us who call ourselves Christians, there are many of us who are unwilling to submit to the voice of the living God. And, 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 and the Lord said, look, I have given you up over to your stubborn hearts to follow after your own very counsel. And, and, and look what the counsel of men, what, look what it has brought us. Following the instructions of men. Many of us look at the world as it is today. Look at your life. It is no better. It is, it is falling apart because instead of following the, the counsel of the living God, we are following the counsel of man. And we are falling away. We are wasting away. Our lives are stumbling away. God wants us to get back to basic, my friend. So with that in mind, with that in mind, I, I want to draw us to the third point because this, this is was where um, a lot of things went last last week. Discouragement. And, and I was addressing the whole thing about discouragement and, and to, to the fact that many of us are so discouraged. And I, and, and I, I must say, because it is something that we, we must understand. Discouragement, my friends. Even before I seek to, to, to read this passage of scripture from, from Proverbs 13. But discouragement, it is, it is to fall into a state of disappointment. It is, it is about falling into despair or despondency or a sense of desolation. And if you put all of that together, it is really to be in a state of gloom. There are many of us right now, our whole life, it's like we are, we are under a, a canopy of gloom. We cannot see tomorrow being better. We cannot, it's, it's as if all hope is taken from us. Or when we look at our lives, we are saying, we, we, when will my life experience victory? When will I experience healing? When will I get that promotion? When will I be able to accomplish academically? When will I get married? When will my marriage be healed? When will the relationships in my life be better? And, 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 we, and we have lost all sense of hope. But I'm here to say, the, the Bible says in Proverbs uh, 13 and verse 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And there are many of us are sick because the things that we desire, it's like those things have been taken from us. We, 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 we are weak to the core and we, 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 we feel so desperate by what is happening. When you look at the behaviors of your children, you're saying, God, God, why and why? And it's like you, you feel like giving up. You feel like you can't bother. But God is saying, my friend, do not be discouraged in this season. Because especially when we talk about discouragement, that's why we have to be careful, my friends. Because when we are going through troublesome times, when we are going through difficult times, uh, in this war fear that we are in, we, we need to be hearing the right things. We need to be hearing the right voices in our ears. Because if we are hearing from the wrong sources, then we'll become even more broken in our spirits. Because if you read further in the text, that same verse, it says, it says but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. In other words, Although many of us 
our hearts have become sick. Because the hope that we carry appears to have deferred to be put off for another time. I say to you, my friend, I say to you, my brother, I say to you, my sister, I say to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I say to you that if you keep fighting through, get rid of that spirit of discouragement and, and encourage yourself along. You know, sometimes we need to encourage ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we need to put ourselves in a mirror, put a smile on and start talking to ourselves and say, yes, Leo, you're going to make it in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we have to be positive as a matter of, not sometimes, but all times we have to be positive. When you get up in the morning, even though it, 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 everything in the week, it, things may have been bad, just go before your mirror, put on a posture, put on a smile. And tell yourself that in the name of Jesus, my week is going to be great. I, I may have started the week bad, but I'm going to end it on a high. I'm going to end it victoriously. I'm going to experience greatness in the name of Jesus. We sometimes must encourage ourselves. And if negative people come in your life and, and are telling you negative stuff in the name of Jesus, say, look, I can't bother with negative stuff today. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke negative stuff. And you must be positive about who you are in Christ because God has something great in store for you, my friend. And it is for you to tell yourself that the, the enemy may have meant evil, but God is going to turn the evil around for my good because what you are encouraging yourself. You're encouraging yourself in the Lord, my brother, my sister. So the hope that was deferred, it was set back for yesterday, but tomorrow will be brighter. Can I encourage somebody here tonight? Oh, glory be to God. It seems as if I may not even get to finish this study tonight. I want to encourage somebody. You are going through the darkest period of your life. I say to you in the name of Jesus, the light of the living God will shine. I say to you, my friend, that the light of God is going to beam in your darkness. And, and you will see that God is in control. The enemy may have told, told you some weeks ago that you are sick and, and your body is down and, 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 and the doctor has no cure for your situation. I speak to your sickness in the name of Jesus because we serve a miracle working God. Our God is able to bring healing to your body. Ah, oh yes, glory be to God. You can be restored. You can be revived. You can be renewed. You can become who God wants you to be. Just put on a positive mind. Oh, don't allow the warfare that is taking place in your spirit that to, to cause it to, to feel as if you have lost. No, you have not lost because you have God on your side. And if God be for you, my friend, tell me who can be again. Oh, I feel so good right now. To somebody, you might as well start thanking God right now in the name of Jesus. Because God is saying that you will not be defeated, but you will rise triumphantly. You're going to get to a place of grace. Oh, you may not deserve it, but you will receive it to the glory and the honor of God. You might as well start singing songs of victory in your living room, in your dining room, in your bedroom, in your car, wherever you are tonight watching this. I, I say to you, my brother, do not allow the enemy to take away your joy. Put a smile on your face because in the name of Jesus, you will be triumphant. Oh, I speak. I feel like I'm going to dance in this place. God is a mighty God. We can defeat the spirit of discouragement. How often we are discouraged. Discouraged by the things we do not have. Discouraged because of the things we are enduring. But you might as well start looking at the things you have. You have a roof up above you. I hear the songwriter says, I have got a roof up above me. A fine place to sleep. Oh, food on my table, shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. We sometimes complain because we do not have, a, have this and we do not have that. Look at what you have. You have children running around the house. They may be a bit noisy, but they are children. Praise God. There are some people who need children. Oh, you are saying, oh, God, I don't know what is happening. I don't have enough money. Look again, there's some money still in the account. It may not be a million, but even if it is $10, you have something and many people do not have it. You have something to rejoice about. Look around your life, my brother, 
and start celebrating because God is good in your life. Do not be discouraged by the things happening in your life because it's uh, it's what the enemy uses. The enemy uses this this spirit of discouragement to crush many of us. Oh, uh, 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 let me move on because I, I feel an anointing upon me right now. In the name of Jesus, I say to you, my brother, I say to you, my sister, that you can triumph because the word of God says, but a desire fulfilled is like a tree of life. Glory be to God. So what, what, what am I getting at here, my friend? All of this leads to the spirit of doubt. Now, doubt, my friend, is it is an uncertainty. It is insecurity. It is an anxiety. It is lack of confidence. And there are many of us who we have no confidence in who we are. Doubt, my friend, is the root of fear. And there are many of us, because of doubt, we are unwilling to even make an effort to do something. And you know what I'm talking about. There are many of us who will not step out because we are so overtaken by doubt. We are troubled by the doubt in our lives. And I want to say to you that doubt can be problematic if we allow doubt to, to become something that manipulate or control our lives. Imagine, imagine this. Because I, 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 I want to, to read a passage of scripture to us. But I, I want us to think about this carefully. In 2 Timothy 2, chapter 1 and verse 7, the Bible tells us, For God has not given us what? A spirit of fear, but a poor love and of a sound mind. Now, I want you to remember this. This is a key text to what we are, we, are, we are addressing. But in Mark 11, listen, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed. In other words, if we speak to our mountains in confidence and say be cast into the sea and do not doubt in our hearts, but believe that those things which we are speaking, those things which we are commanding, those things which we are saying, we will have whatever we ask. I want us to understand, in essence, I hear in this text, if the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, in other words, doubt is not something that should manipulate our heart, lives. And if we go back to the, 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 the text in, in Romans 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, which is, and, and it says, do not be conformed to this world. In other words, doubt is a spirit of the world that draws us and, and draws our attention that we start becoming, we, we start cowering in fear. We, we, we lose the confidence to function. The confidence to, to do what is right. We, 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 we start trembling by the least happenings around us. And God is saying, look, my, my, my sons, my daughters, I have not given you that spirit. I have not given you a spirit of fear. But I want you to be confident in who you are. That even though the, the, the issue in your life is like a mountain. Can I talk to somebody here? I want you to command the mountain in your life. I want you to speak to it. I want you to confront it. I want you to deal with it in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you command it to depart, oh, glory be to God. The Bible tells us we shall have whatever we say. And we must understand something. The Bible tells us our faith will not work. Is that No. There are many of us. The mountains in our lives are before us but we are so unwilling to confront the mountains in other words we are unwilling to deal with the, the issues the problems the struggles the, and, and stuff so they get bigger and bigger but in if we are willing to to apply faith and to trust god and to say look i am going to address these concerns in my life i'm going to address these issues in my life in other words it is not to run away from the responsibility, but to take on the responsibility. 
I'm good. I, I need a job, but God, the job isn't coming. God is saying, look, okay, you have you prayed about it? And you say, oh, yes, Lord, I've prayed many times. And the Lord said, when last have you gone to serve for a job? When last have you, have you looked at your resume and, and have you put together uh, your, your application letters? When last have you submitted some? When last have you gone on the road in search of that job that you believe God for? I, I want to tell you, my friend, if you want, if you are willing to trust God, God wants you to trust him in the place, to have the confidence to know that you must step out of your boat. Too many of us like the safety and the comfort of the boat and fear st stepping out on the ocean of life. Not to say that if we step out, we may not sink. The possibility exists, we may sink. But if we step out and God is there, then we can be assured that he will reach out and say, hold my hand. God is faithful, my friend. So even though doubt may linger, God wants us to have the confidence in him to know that he will not leave us, neither will he forsake us. Am I talking to somebody here? I said, he will not leave us, neither will he forsake us. So let me just move on quickly because time is going. And I want to, you know, to address. There are two other things that I, I, I want to say before I, 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 I wrap up, you know, use five minutes and wrap up, is all that I'm addressing, it boils down to the, 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 the battlefield of the mind, the warfare taking place, is that some of us are carrying around some stuff with us and they become deep-rooted hurts in our lives. We are, we, some painful situations happening because of the trials we have endured and because of the experiences of life that we are hurting and we are holding them and we are unwilling to let go. I say to you, my friend, that God wants us to get to a place where we start become faithful believers who will trust him in whatever warfare we are going through. And when I say this, I want us to understand in Hebrews 12, verses 14 and 15, the Bible tells us to strive for peace with everyone, not with some. Because there are some of us who are comfortable to interact and to relate with people who we are used to. And then we treat certain people with scant regard. But the Bible says, strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Everybody, my friend, if holiness is missing from our lives, we cannot see God. It, you know, we can walk as we like, we can talk as we like, but we cannot behave as we like and go to heaven. God has set the standard, my friend. And if God has set the standard, it is our responsibility to live by the standard that God sets. I said, God has set the standard, not man, not Leo Hall. It is God who dictates the, 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 the standard by which we operate and live. And if, if, if that is the case, then God is demanding that we move up. We get to the place that we should be. So the, I, I, I was reading this, this passage. So he says, see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. That no root of bitterness springs up and cause, causes trouble. And by it, many become defiled. Now, if we understand what the text is addressing, we'll understand that many of us, because of issues we have had with people, we carry around this bitterness with us instead of opening an avenue so that people can be healed, people can be forgiven, and the grace of God, that same grace which was re that reached out to us because I was a sinner deep in sin. As the songwriter says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. In other words, we, as we were sinking in this, this mire of sin, 
God in his grace extend such grace towards us. And he lifted us out of sin. It is grace, my friends. Grace, grace. God's grace. It is not because of our own doing. It is the grace of God that, that a Leo Hall can sit before you and share the gospel. It is the grace of God why I am not dead and gone. It is the grace of God why it, when I look at my life, where I am coming from, the sinful, wicked Leo Hall can, can share with this confidence. It is the grace of God. It is not because I am better than anyone else. It is grace at work. Friends, I said it is grace at work. So, I know people will look at many of us and they remember. Yes, you remember the, 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 the wicked part. You remember the feeling part. You remember the sinful part. You remember the stumbling part. But I thank God for grace tonight. And I'm saying this to say to us, in this warfare that we are going through, uh, the negatives of the mind will tell us, oh, guess what, guess what, guess what, guess what. And I will say, yes, guess what, guess what. Everybody can recall and, and you can bring back all the negative memories. To, but let me tell you, I go against that in the name of Jesus because of the grace of the living God. I will not allow the bitterness of the past to dictate my function today. I will not allow the, 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 the issues, the, the bad issues, the bad relationships, the, 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 the things, the turmoils, the relational turmoils I have been through to dictate how I relate today with others because those things are of the past and they are dead and gone. They are buried. Too many of us are like grave diggers. We like going digging up carps. Oh yes, you can dig up my corpse and keep it. But I am grateful to God. I am delivered from my past. My past is behind me. And I say to you tonight, my brothers and sisters, once you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you don't need to be warring with your past anymore. It's a war for your situation, but it is a battle. It, it's only taking place here. And it's time for you to control your mind in the name of Jesus. I say, look, I... I am a new creature. I'm a new creation. Uh, all things are passed away and be old. All things have become new in Christ Jesus. It's time for us to start speaking some stuff in our lives and start believing the God who we serve because he's a God who gives victory and victory again and again and again. And we have no need to allow our past to dictate our present life or our future. Because God has greater things in store. Friends, I've seen so many who are carrying around guilt with them. But if you can be, I, I pray deliverance for somebody tonight. That you don't have to be carrying that burden anymore. I pray, God, right now, I, I, I tear up that burden of somebody's life. In the name of Jesus, we crush the spirit of bitterness that somebody is carrying tonight. God, right now, I plead a blood, the blood of Jesus against the demon of malice and, 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 and the spirit of bickering and bitterness. God, right now, I trample that serpent tonight in the name of Jesus. And I declare a renewing stands for somebody, a renewing of not just mind, but of being. I declare a transforming person to the glory of the living God. We will not be the same. The old man is dead and gone. We bury that in the name of Jesus Christ. We are new creatures in Christ. So what am I getting at, my friends? I'm saying, if we understand who we are, there is no need for us to function the way many of us function. So as the text says, Romans 12, I beseech you, I beg of you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice. Now, as it addresses us, I say to you, do not be conformed to this world. Do not allow the things of the world to manipulate your mind. In other words, don't allow your mind to become contaminated by the negatives of this world. But be transformed. Be transformed. Be transformed. 
in the name of Jesus. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed. So I say to you, my friend, guard your mind because, and when I say guard your mind, guard your mind against the things that you entertain, the people who you, you entertain and communicate with. Guard your mind. Guard your mind. You don't have to listen to the garbage anymore. You don't have to listen to some conversation. anymore. That person who, who is entertaining you, guard your mind, guard your being from that those persons. Because what? You must understand one day, you will have to give an account to your God. You will have, God is going to remind you that look, I, I sent you a word, but you rejected it. And he's saying, look, you do not have to you. Do not allow those who are negative to dictate who you are and who you become. You serve God. And God is faithful. So my friends, I have had friends, many friends. But I can tell you, those who I enjoy sitting with are those who are positive. Because they encourage me a lot. We must be encouragers. And we, we need to be hearing the right stuff. And as I close tonight, I, I just want you to understand that God loves us so much and he's demanding of us that we function the way we should be functioning to his honor and glory. to distract you. All the things, the negative do not allow the disappointments you have endured. We serve God. It's a warfare. And God wants you Gracious God, to you be the glory forever. I'm thankful that we can turn to you in this time, in this season, knowing that you are God. We are your creation and you are in control. God, right now, I pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you will visit our lives as we wrestle mentally the emotions, as we wrestle with the different thoughts, as we wrestle with the different issues of life, we surrender our heart to you. And we ask that through your Holy Spirit, you will remove everything that is not of you. Break every spirit that is not of you. God is spirit of bondage. It has kept us in bondage long enough. God, we crush that spirit tonight and we are coming out we are coming out to the glory and the honor of you oh god god right now we pray over every area of everybody who is watching tonight life god every person whatever they are struggling with i give them to you i i pray peace the peace of god which passes all understanding i pray i release it 
to the atmosphere right now in everybody's life. God, breakthroughs, miracles, healing, deliverance, restoration. God, open doors supernaturally. Work in the life of your people, I pray right now. Let there be an open heaven over every house represented. Every bedroom represented. Every uh, car represented. Every cell phone. Wherever that cell phone is at this time, watching this, this, this broadcast, I, I release victory in that person's life right now in the name of Jesus. And I declare victory to your honor and glory. God, I speak wellness tonight in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. My friends, indeed, it was a pleasure to be sharing with you tonight. I must tell you, I've been enjoying these studies and I know you have been enjoying these studies as well. So I will ask of you, please, my brothers and sisters, take the time to just send us a text, send us something to know what you think. I will ask of you as well to just go over our page, uh, the YouTube channel page, and please subscribe and like this video. We are truly grateful for the support you have been giving, and we are grateful for you joining us in this time of studies. Thanks again for watching. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.